Um, and, and how does that play out? We think about Wikipedia and we compare it to a traditional encyclopedia like Britannica in English or Brockhaus in German. And we say, well, how is it competing? How is it different? Um, but here, this is a new type of work. Um, when, if you go and you look at a major bookstore or you go to Amazon.com and you uh, search and you look for books about the Muppets, uh, you'll find there's been a lot of books, hundreds of books written about the Muppets, some official, some unofficial. Uh, but there's never existed a business model or an economic way to create an encyclopedia of a single pop culture phenomenon with 18,000 entries. Uh, this is something entirely new that we were not able to create in the past. Uh, 50 years ago, if you contemplated creating something like this, it would, it would have been no way to do it. You can't afford to pay people to do this because there's just not enough revenue associated with it. It's a very small uh, niche topic that not enough people are interested in. You can never sell this. Um, and so a traditional publisher would have looked at the idea and said, no, it's too much. We can't, we're not going to sell enough copies to justify it. Whereas today, the community that really cares about it, they now have the tools, they have the platform, they can build this themselves. Um, I recently talked to the guy who founded uh, the Muppet Wiki, and I said to him, uh, you guys must be running out of things to talk about. And he said, oh no, we're just getting started. <laughs> they have, uh, seriously, they have plans uh, on this wiki uh, for articles that they haven't created yet, and they, the last estimate I heard is they think they can easily get to 100,000 articles about the Muppets, um, because there's a lot of information that they haven't covered yet. So I think that's kind of amazing. And it's something entirely new, and I think that's really interesting. So finally, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, term that's become very, very popular in the internet world, uh, and it's, it's leaking out into other areas, and that's this term of crowdsourcing. Uh, and I think crowdsourcing is a really horrible term. Uh, I think it's something that we should avoid, because I think it causes people to misunderstand what's going on on the internet, and it's also a little bit insulting to the communities of people who are uh, really coming together to build things. Um, the idea of crowdsourcing uh, comes from uh, the idea of outsourcing. Uh, that's the original thought. So you think, well, it's very expensive to hire computer programmers in California, so uh, maybe we're going to hire some people in India instead. It'll be cheaper and we'll save some money. Uh, the IT sector is moving in India, so we're going to outsource certain work to India. Um, and this is about finding the cheapest labor sources. But uh, people think of crowdsourcing as trying to get the cheapest possible labor source, which is free, uh, by tricking people on the internet into doing the work. Um, well, I think this is a completely upside down way of understanding what's going on online. And what I invite people to do is to think about, um, imagine that you are running a bowling alley. Um, so I don't know if people know this movie. I hear a few people laughing. This is The Big Lebowski, a very funny movie. A lot of it's set in a bowling alley. Um, so imagine that you own a bowling alley and you want people to come and bowl in the bowling alley. Uh, and so imagine that you think to yourself, well, you know, we could hire professional bowlers uh, to do the bowling, but they're very expensive. Some of them make more than a million dollars a year. Uh, so we're going to try to trick the public into coming in and doing the work of uh, bowling for free. That doesn't make any sense, right? Bowling is not work. Uh, bowling is a game. Bowling is something people are doing for fun. And if you think as a bowling alley owner that the, I, the objective is to uh, outsource or crowdsource the work of bowling, you really misunderstand the business that you're in entirely. Uh, you're not trying to get people to do work for free. What you're trying to do is you're trying to build a community. You're trying to think about what do the customers want, what is it that people are really wanting to do, and how can I provide them the tools that they need to be able to do that. So uh, at both Wikipedia and Wikia, we don't think about, um, and this is particularly true at Wikia, where we're really trying to push into new areas, we don't sit and think about, oh, well, here's some work that we want to have done, uh, how do we get the public to do it? Instead we say, what are, what are the users wanting? What is it that people are trying to do on the internet and having trouble doing that we can help them? How can we make it easy for them to do what they want to do? Um, and that guides all of our actions. And this is exactly uh, what you should be doing. A lot of companies out there today, in the internet space especially, they think of some objective, something they want to get done, and they say, I'm going to go into business doing this, but I'm going to be able to do it cheaper because I'm going to crowdsource it. And then they fail. They fail because they never stop to think about the problem from the other direction. They didn't think about the problem from the direction of 
gee, what are people out there wanting to do, and then how can I help them do that, and how can that be productive in some way? So it's a very different approach, and so I'm, I'm telling people uh, we should really avoid the term crowdsourcing because it's causing a lot of confusion um, about the real human values that are being supported uh, by the internet. So that's the end of my prepared remarks. Thank you, and now we're going to have time for questions. So thank you. di una cosa che mi aveva accennato perché lui oggi ci ha detto mi aveva anticipato che eh, c'era qualcosa di cui voleva parlare che lui voleva dire in italiano uh, yeah, word. <laughs> I just it today. Uh, risposte 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 okay. yeah, so, uh, One of the things we've done at Wikia is uh, we've launched a site called answers.wikia.com in English. Uh, we, we've had this site for many years and then we did a redesign and all of a sudden it started getting very, very popular. And it's a place where people come and ask questions uh, and then the community answers the questions. This is very interesting because some of the answers, uh, people are finding the answers in Wikipedia and they're just saying, oh, well, here's the answer from Wikipedia. But a lot of the questions are not... Uh, they're more like how-to questions. How, you know, how do I fix my car? Where do I buy this? How do I find that? It's become incredibly popular and it's really interesting. And so we're expanding it and we're just launching um, today, I just announced it to the media, uh, Risposte. Risposte.wikia.com, which is the Italian version of this site. Um, and so you can go and ask a question, any question that you have. Uh, and then uh, you can also see other questions other people have asked and then people are trying to answer the questions. It's sort of like uh, Yahoo has a Yahoo Answers, uh, except for there, it's like a message board. People post, uh, each person posts their opinion and then uh, they vote to see which one is the best. Um, whereas here, everybody's working together in collaboration. They're not competing for the best answer. They try to improve the answers that everyone is having. So, well, anyway, I hope it's uh, successful. Bene, partirei con le domande se c'è qualcuno nel pubblico. Uh, buongiorno, volevo sapere quali erano state le difficoltà personali e professionali sue all'inizio di questo della startup di Wikipedia. E la seconda domanda è come mai sia Google, Yahoo, uh, Wikipedia, uh, Facebook sono tutte made in USA e non c'è nessuno di questi um, nuovi elementi dell'onda dell anomala che sono made in Europe e made in Italy. Qual è la causa secondo lei? So, uh, what was the first question? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the first one because I was so excited. Oh, the early days, yes. Well, so uh, in, in 1999 was when I first had the idea, uh, the, the big vision of a free encyclopedia uh, in all the languages of the world, free in the sense of free license, um, uh, written by volunteers. And, Uh, when I had the idea, I first launched a project called Newpedia, which was the previous uh, version. Uh, and Newpedia, I hired a, a guy who is a PhD in philosophy to organize it. And he organized a very, very academic and very top-down system. Uh, Seven-stage review process to get something published. You had to uh, send in your credentials before you were allowed to begin writing something. You had to send in a proposal. Uh, this was a failure. Uh, and I think the main reason it was a failure is it wasn't much fun. Um, in fact, we, nobody had ever had the idea of crowdsourcing before at that time, but honestly I think that's what we, we, we had that wrong idea. We said, we want to make an encyclopedia, let's try to get the public to do it. And uh, we did it upside down. Where we began to be successful was later when we stumbled on the wiki concept, which actually we didn't invent, it was invented by Ward Cunningham in 1995. And then the wiki concept really said, you know, let's, let's give people the easy tools and let them start building uh, in their own way what they want to build. And then that's when it started to become successful. Obviously, there was a lot of struggle beyond that. Um, we had many different uh, times. I remember there was once um, 
uh, in 2003 uh, was when I transferred it from the for-profit and donated everything into the non-profit organization. Uh, and then on Christmas,